On September 12, 1814, British ships of war approached the port of Baltimore. In the entire Royal Navy, there were eight bomb ships. Five of them were sitting there in the Patapsco River. These are the most powerful siege artillery afloat. On board one of these British warships, an American, Francis Scott Key. Talk about a witness to history. He finds himself in Baltimore Harbor just prior to this battle. The Congreve rocket's red glare lights up the skies over the harbor. It was like a fireworks display. People who watched it were enthralled. They were terrified of the noise, absolutely terrified. But they saw a kind of beauty in it. The heavy fire goes on and on. Aboard an enemy attack ship, Francis Scott Key hears the British plans for Baltimore and fears the worst. He knows that the level of hatred that's directed at the city would probably mean death and destruction of, of the town. The barrage from the water is constant, and with British infantry marching on the city's borders, Key knows Baltimore's fate looks grim. Key paced the deck of his ship in the darkness, hoping the explosions would continue, because if they didn't, he knew that the fort had capitulated. The siege lasts all night. As dawn nears, there is a sudden silence. Key was on board the ship wondering and asking himself what flag would be raised over the fort. The morning mist began to clear, and he made out the stars and stripes flying above the fort. The American experiment, the American nation for that moment was surviving. Mary Pickersgill's masterpiece unfurls over the fort. Never before had he looked with such reverence upon the symbol of his country. Never before had the flag had such a sheen to its glory. It was the glory of victory. The wool catches the wind. The stars and stripes wave in the face of the enemy. The British are convinced the fort cannot be breached. Baltimore has been saved. <laughs> 